Welcome everyone again to the DS Incubator. We are on the series about working with a terminal and today we start with part one really. And last time we did a little overview, I was trying to understand actually what um, I wanted to cover. And I also did gather some feedback last time that uh, helped me tweak the syllabus, syllabus a little bit. Um, I realized that um, it could be um, important to, well I think it was CJ who pointed it out, important to talk about editing text files with uh, ugly um, programs like Vim. Not because I encourage you to do it, but sometimes you are dropped in a system that has no other option and it's such a weird program. It's very powerful and I love it, but uh, it has a huge learning curve. Uh, so I think the basics that you, everyone needs to know is you know, how to get out of it, <laughs> how to save a file, how to close a file, which is surprisingly difficult. Um, and uh, a, th a couple of other things that I thought uh, to take the chance is, okay, this, um, the focus of this series is to learn how to do things uh, as a user with a, you know, like, a like the audience could be mostly um, like an average developer or an average um, analyst. But also uh, I think that at least the superficial or the, 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 you know, the basics of um, understanding how multi-user systems work is useful because I've heard from some analysts that sometimes they need to work with a computer on the cloud because they need to do huge computations or something and they are told they're going to be working with you know like a, a server that is running Ubuntu or some other Linux distribution uh, and then they will freeze because like oh wow I don't know anything about Ubuntu or whatever so I want to kind of you know show that it's not so difficult so show a little bit how it works not for you to kind of go ahead and, and do it you know the next day but to understand the basics and then if you need um, to uh, learn more you can do it on your own and also to talk a little bit about the idea of dot files which are files that allow you to configure basically your system and how you could uh, probably save them in a way that even if your system you know dies you can recover from that fairly quickly um, including your preferences for how your system should look like so that's about it uh, so we can now get started with uh, what we have for today um, so what I'm gonna do is make this screen a little bigger as usual each um, each meetup kind of maps to a folder um, so today the file in this folder um, covers what uh, we want to talk about today but we're gonna come back to this file next time because I don't think we're gonna have time to cover the entirety of part one today so to begin with I want to um, well first acknowledge where these um, uh, these resources come from it come from it comes from uh, two resources actually one is um, the section the appendix a from happy kid with R which has a very brief but useful explanation about what's the shell, how you can start a shell in a studio and outside of studio. Um, and uh, and the, once you're in that book, you're very close to also finding tips for troubleshooting, a bunch of things that relate to your terminal, to Git and R and GitHub. So I think it's a good resource to link here so that you uh, kind of land in that book that I have found useful so, so many times. Uh, it's probably the star of the coding help desks, to be honest. Uh, and then uh, we are also using um, at least inspiration and ideas from the, a lesson from the Carpentries that is called the Shell or um, the Shell Basics, I think. But everything is linked, so uh, you can find all of those resources. So what's the Shell? Um, it's very confusing, to be honest, because you know we say uh, different things to mean the same thing. <laughs> uh, the Shell is a program to run other programs, basically. It's, uh, it's imagine you have your um, graphical inter user interface if you're using Windows or Mac or whatever you go and I open programs by clicking things well the terminal is the same thing it's, it's except that you don't click on things you just type things on the screen it's uh, very used because it's everywhere really uh, and it's very concise you can express um, and do very powerful things in, in a very in very few kicks with very few keystrokes and it's very fast too um, and the, from all the shells that there are, there is one that is very common. It's going to be the start of this series. It's called Bash. Um, Mac has Bash. Uh, Linux has Bash. And Windows has Bash if you install Git. Uh, so we're going to make sure that we do that. 
Um, and uh, I said, you know, it's confusing when we talk about the shell because, you know, different people may um, may have different words for the same thing. Uh, maybe it's not strictly like what I'm going to say now, but some pseudo synonyms are terminal, shell, command line, console. They all more or less mean the same. They will mean the same uh, for the purposes of this meetup. So first, you're going to be probably trying to figure out how you actually get a shell. <laughs> It depends on your on your on your system. Here I'm using Linux, and Linux is not covered um, in in this explanation today. Basically, because Linux is so dependent on a shell that if you're using Linux, you are already very likely um, comfortable with the concepts that we're covering here. But if I have to um, open a shell, for example, what I do is I press the what what it would be the Windows button in a um, in a Windows uh, and start typing terminal and uh, here it is and then I go enter and, and that's what I get and uh, let's go back to the, uh, the lesson uh, you can do the same thing within our studio um, so there is a couple of ways in which you can do that so I'm gonna show you uh, how I do that in my local art studio I go here to tools and here you see already that there is a place that says shell uh, and the shell opens um, but that is also um, something that you can configure. Not, I mean, there is different flavors of shells, and uh, the one that opens there is something that you configure. And if you're in Windows in particular, first you need to install Git. Um, also, uh, there is a terminal tab in our studio here, uh, where next to the console, there is this terminal thingy. And this is what I'm going to be using uh, today. Uh, not in my local R studio, I'm going to be using an R studio that um, environment that I get from. A Docker container because I want you to be able to reproduce it even if you are not uh, comfortable with Docker maybe someday you want to um, reproduce exactly what I did and, and the environment is going to be there so um, yeah here in the terminal tab you also have a shell to start um, typing commands and doing what we're going to be showing today in the lesson um, and what else um, in our studio you can um, or in general you can check which um, shell you are using to see if it is a bash shell uh, after you install git in windows it should become the default but it may not be the case uh, it wasn't the case for one of us uh, recently and I, I helped debug that issue uh, so it's kind of tricky um, so maybe this um, I'm gonna kind of show it briefly so how you may you know, go about that um, so as, as it says here in the global options um, you, you know you can see what things you have configured, including global options here. So tools, global options. I think there is a glitch here. I'm showing something that I'm not meant to show. Weird. So there is a terminal section here at the close to the end, uh, and it says, "Well, what is uh, that new terminals open with?" And here you have options. So you know, most likely you have bash. In my case, you have custom. You know, it looks like it's configured through some other place. Uh, but the shell that I'm using is called uh, ZSH, which is similar to Bash, um, but with some tweaks. Um, but nothing that you need to worry about now, just with Bash, we're fine. And then outside our studio, as I show in my Linux system, I you know press the open software button, and then I start typing terminal. Same thing for Mac OS. Uh, you start a terminal, just typing terminal in your programs finder. And in Windows, again, you, know, you need to install Git. I here provide the link to um, where to get Git, uh, and then um, you know in Windows you also have a programs launcher and you type um, Git Bash because uh, that's the that's where the terminal comes from. Um, so the setup. Um, so I want to make sure that everyone has access to a terminal so that you can follow if you want. Um, so maybe this first part is not all that um, um, exciting, but uh, it's something that you, you you can probably do on your own time as well um, so the um, uh, the book happy kid with R has uh, precise instructions to how uh, you can get a terminal if you don't have one um, but basically if you follow the advice here if you're on Windows for example and you install git then you should have a git bash terminal and then um, we need to download the data that comes with the lesson from the carpentries, which I now realize that I haven't linked here. I'm pretty sure it's linked somewhere else, but I should add a link here where it says example data so that you can you can download it yourself and then place it in the, in the desktop folder because that's where I'm going to be um, 
placing it myself. Uh, so if you want to follow exactly what I'm doing, that's the best place you can place that data. But because uh, I want you to be able to reproduce this uh, meetup if you want, I uh, created a um, Docker environment. And so the repository that hosts the meetup has everything that you need to um, have to be able to reproduce my environment. So the, there is a file called Dockerfile and a file called docker-compose.yaml. So those are the things that make the trick. But uh, for um, you know, if you are a Docker user or if you were in the DS uh, incubator about Docker, and uh, then once you have the repo locally, all you need to do is uh, Docker uh, compose app. So you type that, uh, and that will start uh, an R Studio instance on your web browser. So what I'm going to do next is go to my web browser and type localhost, which is the address where R Studio serves this um, service. And uh, here we're presented with this uh, challenge. So username R Studio. It is what it is. That's what you need to type. And password is something that I said. Very difficult. One, two, three. Um, we have to put a password, uh, and there is no risk in, in, in sharing the password for this specific example. Um, so one, two, three is good enough. So what you see here looks like the R Studio that you have locally, but it's not. It's an R Studio instance uh, running on a Docker container, and it is running Linux. So and now uh, you have a Bash terminal in the terminal tab. And um, so if I click there, this is you know what a Bash terminal looks like. So this is what we are going to be using uh, for uh, this series. Uh, also notice that um, you know I'm also purposely using our studio because we have next to the terminal we have you know this Windows interface where I can click on things and show you a more familiar environment for what we are doing in the terminal. So for example, if I do um, um, the first thing that you might want to do is to locate where you are. Uh, which in this case, um, with this, with the, you know how this terminal ha prompt has been, so the prompt is this thing blinking here, and uh, and, and everything that I'm highlighting here. So this um, has already some information about where I'm standing. I'm standing at tilde, and tilde is short form for home. So whatever this computer has defined home. So if we want to know explicitly what that is, uh, the very first command that you need to locate yourself to navigate your file system is print working directory pwd and i will tell you so for this computer that i'm running the home directory is under um, slash home slash r studio so that's how this computer has been set um, so everything inside that directory the user um, r studio has usually the user name matches the home directory right so at least in in linux um, computers and in Max, I believe. So everything that is inside that directory, this user has privileges to do whatever, like you know, create files, delete files, and things like that. Okay, so the very first command has been presented, print wd, it shows us where we are. We are at home, and also you can see the same information here on your right. Maybe, let me make this a little bigger. Uh, so as you can see, the, the files navigator of our studio already shows us we are in home, except that we don't know exactly where home is. Uh, so if I click there, what do I get? Nothing. I get the same thing. So the very next thing that you might want to do is to locate yourself, navigate your file system, is to do uh, list files, ls for list files. Um, that will show you the contents of that directory where you are standing right now. So it's desktop and projects here on the right. Uh, same thing here. That's um, um, you know a way to show new content here on the left based on something that you already know. Uh, you already know Windows um, how to navigate your computer there. So I can click, for example, on desktop and see the contents of desktop. So if I want to do here the same thing, uh, I can do ls and now have to type desktop, right? Um, so one thing I want to, ex to to show today is how to make writing path uh, easy. Um, that's you know typing on the terminal is one of the first big barriers um, but many of us don't realize until quite later after using the terminal how many th um, shortcuts and, and convenience things there are to help you type you know paths that we, we keep typing all the time so if I type a few keystrokes and then press the tab uh, I you know the terminal will complete the path for me so I don't need to type it all so LS and um, PWD, those two commands are extremely useful. Um, so here, as you can see, I see the same thing, the same contents of uh, my, my desktop um, 
I see the folder here on the left and on the right. Um, and you can go farther, right? So with the up arrow, you recover uh, previous commands. Uh, and I believe, I'm not sure if this is gonna work here, but if you press Ctrl R, uh, maybe I need to, to start typing something. Uh, let's see, Ctrl R or R. Well, it's not working here. Ctrl R, LS, 